is another testimony of if God is for you, who can be against you? This should be the round of the century. I was not supposed to win this. So now you guys are listening because we did win. And I can glorify God the way I want to glorify him. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. We are back. Um, another episode of Quick Hits. Uh, we've got a good one today. We're going to get into Jamel Charlo. Last one, we're going to do a Jamel, Jamel Charlo for a while. Um, on this, when he just became undisputed, so we got to go down what his next options are since he's won all the belts at 54. Uh, before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Please follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, on all forms of social media. Uh, also, please subscribe to our other channel, Texas Boxing Scene, on YouTube. All proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. It's a channel that's very near. It's a cause that's very near and dear to our heart. Um, all right, let's get into Jamel Charlo. A spectacular win over Brian Castano. Question is, what's next for Charlo? Uh, we're going to get into all three options. He can stay at 54. Um, I think, I do believe by the end of this year, I'm going to say in the fourth quarter of this year, we do get Spence versus uh, Crawford. I do think that's going to happen. Okay. Crawford wins that fight. Um, we could get Crawford versus Charlo. Definitely could happen. Um, if Spence wins that fight. If Crawford wins, I we, we could get could get Crawford and, and Jamel. If Spence wins that fight, and I know Jamal Jamel said he would fight Spence. I follow the news, I read the articles, I'm watch the I, I understand that that's what Jamel said. Do you really think that he would fight Spence? Not only would he fight have to fight his buddy Spence, his stablemate, he'll have to fight him likely without um Derek James who I think should be trainer of the year. So he'd have to fight Spence, the toughest part of his career, no doubt. Um, Who's his friend without his trainer? Now, he could do it. I, I just don't think he's going to take that fight, period. And now he's got to fight without his trainer. I don't think he's going to take that fight. I don't think he's going to take it. And I don't blame him for not taking it. I don't think he's going to take that fight. Um, So I, I don't think the Spence fight would, would happen. So he could stay at 54, and there are a plethora. There are uh, three top-notch 154-pounders, young upstarts, who are on the verge, on the precipice, knocking on the door of fighting for a belt, uh, fighting for a world title. I'm going to go through them in no particular order. Number one, Jesus Ramos, who I think is just spectacular. Um, I, That would pose the biggest challenge for Jamel of these three names I'm going to give you. I, Ramos isn't just a big, strong kid who can come forward and beat you up, although he can. He's light on his feet. He, he's got – he's really fundamentally sound. He can fight going backwards. Like, this kid is special. Um, he's the future of this division. I'm going to give you three names. I think he's the best. Like, he's 20 years old. Like he's already got world champion pedigree. He's going to be a long-running champ, likely in multiple divisions. He started at 140, which is crazy to me. Now he's at 154. Um, he's a big, strong kid, big power, right? Strong physically, good combination puncher, can fight good, defensively responsible. I mean, there's nothing I don't love about Jesus Ramos. That would be a challenge for him. The other two fights I think Charlie wins, I'm going to get into. Tim Zhu, good fighter, good win. Um, it, no one would complain about that fight. Tim Zhu is a good challenge, and I think he presents a difficult challenge for, for Jamal Charlo. Jamal beats him. The other name is Fondor, and, and I'm going to pick Jamal to win that fight, too. Um, but boy, Fandor is going to be difficult. He's six seven or six six, however tall he is, right? He's just so functionally long, practically long. Like how you can't keep him off. He's right back on you. You can't create space because he's so long. He takes up so much space. It's just not the, the jab that he can keep at you. You can't get him off of you. He just takes up so much space. He just covers so much of the ring that you can't create any space. And he's back in your chest, pounding away. It's kind of what makes Brandon Figueroa so special at those small weight classes. How do you keep him off of you? You can't, right? He's just on you. And then Figueroa's got the, the, the work rate and, and the volume. And it's just, it, 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 it's like, there's no stopping him. Um, the only stopping him is bad scoring. Like Stephen Fulton benefited from him. Um, now, I do pick Jamel Charlo to beat Fandor because Fandor's got a lot of flaws, and, and Jamel Charlo's a heck of a fighter. So I think he would expose those. Um, but, I mean, look, how do you fight 
how do you spar? How do you prepare for a guy who's that tall and long? Like, where do you find sparring with a guy who's – I'm going to find a 154-pound guy who's 6'6". Six, six. Who, who do you spar with? You know what I'm saying? Like, 6'6 six, six is about Wilder's height. It, it's just so insane that he's at a 154. Um, so, I mean, it, that presents a ton of challenges. And I, I guess I do think Charlo wins that fight. But, I mean, there would be nothing easy – about that fight. I don't think anyone has an easy time with um, Sebastian Pandora. Um, the other option, now th those three options are fine. Okay. Those are all good fighters. He's not ducking anyone if he takes any of those fights. And if he wants to stay at 154 and run through the division and fight next man up and just clean up the division like Hopkins did in the uh, 90s and early 2000s, go for it. Do it. No one's knocking you. Absolutely. But they're not very lucrative fights. So he can take them, and I'm not going to knock them for taking them. They're fine fights. They're good challenges, but they're not lucrative. The lucrative fight is the third option. He vacates the belts through the WBO, goes through their rule where you can fight an elimination or fight for a title, and fight the WBO champion. That WBO champion at 160 is currently Demetrius Andre, who is going to, through multiple, multiple reports, going to vacate that belt and fight at 168 against Zach Parker in an elimination fight. Um, who is the WBO number one challenge at 160? It's Jaime Munguia. It's an interesting fight. So this is speculation. Don't quote me on this. Right? Just, just a hunch I'm getting. If Andre, which he's expected to, goes to 168 and vacates the belt, the WBO would call their... Uh, title fight for the, for the vacant now vacant WBO 160 pound belt between the number one challenger Jaime Munguia and the man from 154 coming up Jamal Charlo. That's a really good fight. It's a lucrative fight. It's a big payday. Uh, Munguia sells well in Texas. Charles from Texas. Oscar if Golden Boy won the purse bid or, or or got the fight loves putting fights in Texas. Um, it would sell really well there. It would be a big deal. If PBC got the fight, you know, Vegas or, or, or Texas, you know, either one would, would, would be fine. Um, it's a really, really interesting fight. It's an intriguing fight. Mugi, I think, is the most improved guy in boxing. I would still pick Jamel to win that fight. I think Jamel's too fundamentally sound. I think he does too many things well. I think that, you know, Charles uh, Mugi would have moments. He would do well in spots. But ultimately, I think Charles is the better fighter. But that is the fight right there. I think... Of all the fights that he could realistically get, if like Spence and Crawford doesn't work out, going up to 160 and fighting Munguia is his best bet. I think it's a fight that he can win. I think it's a fight he would win. I would definitely pick him over um, Munguia based on uh, several facts. He's a better boxer. He's quicker, right? He's cleaner. He, he throws cleaner combinations. I think he can get inside. He can punch in between Munguia's punches. You know, um, he can fight him in, in, in a number of ways. I would definitely pick Jamel to win that fight in a really entertaining fight, though. Because, like I said, Munguia is really, really vastly improved. His jab is better. His footwork is better. It's a lot of things better. But I would still definitely pick Jamel to win that fight. Um, so let me know. That's the fight I would pick for. Right? I think that's his best bet um, if he doesn't want to say it before. And he wants to make the most money uh, in the biggest fight. Um, I, I think Munguia is the best bet. Right? He doesn't require anyone coming up for him. He can go and get it from the WBO. You know, they'd be... They would make it immediately, get a middleweight belt, be a two-division world champ. You know, I, I think it's a, it, it's a good bet for him. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Let me know what you think the best option is. What do you think of a possible Munguia fight? Um, please like, share, and subscribe. 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, on all forms of social media. Also, our other channel on YouTube, Texas Boxing Scene. Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. Uh, all proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. It is May 19th, 2022. Uh, from Texas to the world, thank you and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.